YouTube, what's good? Uh, today I wanna talk about content strategy. This is something I've been blasting on for 15 years. Uh, and it's something that's evolved quite a bit. So I wanted to make this video to break it down, the evolution, the ebb and flow, how things have changed, update it, contextualize it, and bring you the most value as I download my thoughts on content strategy. The number one thing you should do more than anything is use this interview as the case study to become a better micro storyteller to, under, to awareness against this. Let me explain. You probably don't have a Tumblr. Okay. No, no, here's, and, and, here's I, the and thing. by the way, I don't do it super well either, even though I was an investor, but let's stick here because I want to be detailed. You should start one. You should have an I Love Marketing Tumblr account because there's plenty of 14 to 21 year old huck, you know, hipsters that love, that love Tumblr, right? That mm -hmm. have never heard of you, me, or anybody else because they're in, they're in the streets, they're cool, but they want to be entrepreneurs. You take one moment from here where you're holding up the wallet or where I'm being silly and you make it an animated GIF. You know what an animated GIF is, right? Yeah. The looping over. You put an animated GIF on Tumblr with one of the quotes from you or me from this interview and then that quote links back to the iTunes download of this. You have nobody on your Tumblr account. Just like anybody would when they start. Right. But you take this interview and you link your Tumblr, you blast out an email and say, We're now on Tumblr, and you get 10, 11, 50. You know, it's, it's un you know how it works. Yeah. You start at zero, you build. You should do that. You should make an infographic that's female centric. Things that you believe the female psychology would have gotten out of this, and make an infographic and start your Pinterest board of infographics from your interviews. You get one influential Pinterest person to repin it. And you could have 10, 15, 100,000 people get new awareness about your show. And Pinterest is a dream. It clicks out to wherever you want. So your infographic that you made from this, seven fun things Gary said, you, you know what infographics mm -hmm. look like. Yeah. And that links out to the podcast download. I mean, this is the future, man. Micro content as a gateway drug to awareness to your bigger thing. So put out micro pieces of content. I'm a big believer and I, look, I think that I'm hitting a golden era in my content production. Live streaming, my Snapchat stories game is up, my Instagram game is up, my Twitter's still on point, my Facebook fan page content is up, LinkedIn is, is stronger than it was before. Pinterest, we're still lagging. We need to really get our Pinterest game up, right? It'll happen for Wine Library, I think. I know, but we're talking about me now, Steve, not live, Wine Library. Uh, you know, Pinterest needs to get up a little bit, but you need to put out micro contents. The reason I wrote Jab, 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 Right Hook is to get you to put out different little pieces of content that still thematically ladder back up to what you're doing on your website that are contextual for the platform. Big Ed, don't get lazy on me. You're Big Ed. Go out there and put out content across the board and and don't just make it, remember the jabs need to be jabs. Don't just make the content where you're like, my biggest idea ever is dot, 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 go to my website. Your website will get traffic as a byproduct and you are able to throw right hooks in those social platforms, but put out jabs of value to the audience where they actually spend their time. Big Ed, they love you and they, lo they wanna go to your website, but they'd rather, more than being on your website, be in all these other places and it's up to you to be there and use that as a gateway drug to get them back. Well look, I mean, you should, you should be putting out content on a very regular basis. You should start a pillar show, whether it's, I mean, vlogging I think is very fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, you should be doing Instagram stories and Snapchat stories at scale. You should be putting out seven to 25 pieces of content on both those platforms a day. A day. And let me explain how. Don't go fancy. Mm -hmm. Document versus create. When you, when you make, you, you like that, right? It's a big, it's a big shift. When I say seven to 25, you say, my God, how do I produce seven to 25 meaningful things that will have me respected versus document? See, that's, that's, that's always the thing, is like meaningful that will get me respected. I feel like mm -hmm. anybody can put out shit. You know, like, I don't wanna put out shit. But shit is subjective, my man. And I got good news for you. You're fully in control. Yeah, yeah. People always like, Gary, you put it, like, I'm in control. You know how many things I say no? They send me quotes to put out on Instagram? Nope, I'm in control. Mm -hmm. Who makes the final call on like productions? The producer, the director, I don't know, whoever. Who's the final person? Producer. Great, you're the producer, my man. Yeah. Right? I don't know, you, t you, you take a selfie with a nice skyline and you're like, yeah. 
but you gotta put out stuff. And you, and you gotta fabricate it. Like, when you're, like, I still can't believe how many people that live in New York don't use New York people. If I were you, and I had an hour right now, go in the fucking park right now, right now, like, I don't know, like, go back to your basketball route, stand outside the garden right there and be like, what do you think about the Knicks upcoming season? Yeah, interview four people, one person gets into a thoughtful conversation, he was the former ball boy in 1957, it's a nice story, and boom. You see where I'm going? Document over create. How many of you heard that from me? Document over create. Great. So that took me a long time to get to. Maybe like seven years. But it was the thing that really unlocked it for a lot of people. Just for a lot of you, my point on, on creating content is instead of trying to think what you make, just document everything you're doing. If you act, do you know that two or three of you, if you just documented the journey of figuring this out, that people would watch your video on YouTube every day of you trying to figure out the school system and that in itself was what would build your business? Yeah, it's a story, it's the, it's the journey of an entrepreneur. The legacy that I'm creating with Daily V, fuck. You know how cool that's gonna be when there's 10 years worth of my every day? <laughs> Especially if I pull off very big things. I would love, you know, you know how fun it would be to watch the three years before Drake became famous, everything he did? Yeah. So what was the inspiration to start this and to really, it must be a lot of work. You know, it's a lot more, it's, it's actually not a lot of work. It's actually been an incredibly smart strategy, to be honest. You know, I live my life, somebody documents it, they post-produce, I am not egotistical or, or too romantic and so I don't really get involved in post-production. I, I mean, it literally, I don't even know, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of work at all, which is scary compared to the impact it has. It creates a consistent show, which works. It also feeds all my written audio and other micro video content. I mean, the fact that I can put out a clip uh, on Instagram a couple days ago that gets a million organic views and have that branding in that 20, you know, 20 to 35 demo that I'm so desperate to have and the fact that that was just one moment of me being at Wine Library on a Saturday giving a 13 year old kid some advice that we post edited and chopped up in post production on my media team internally, that's incredible. Like I'm, I'm, I think I figured it out. Macro content at scale which then creates micro content at scale, all of which doesn't do anything to me other than force me to actually live my life. I'm not doing anything today for Daily B. I'm living life. And so it's a very interesting thing that I'm doing because I'm confusing a lot of people. I've created an incredible perception that I spend all my time on my personal brand in a world where I spend none of my time on my personal brand. You talked a little bit about quality being subjective and in a lot of ways that, that comes to play with this idea. Uh, I, I, I wanna push back a little Please. bit on that. Yeah, because I, I mean, at least from my own experience, it's been producing one high quality video every single week and that's like w eventually what it became. In the beginning it was podcasting. I'm doing eight teasers for every single podcast. I'm putting them on social. I'm sharing them with the people that were on my show and it became so much work when I was seeing a massive return on these short edited videos that I was making, eight to 10 minute videos on YouTube. And then it became for me, how can I make one amazing video every week versus five decent videos? That's what worked for you. Yeah. And for Steven Spielberg, it's one movie, mm -hmm. you know, a year. Yours is doing way too much volume for him, right? And for me, it's not even close to enough volume. Mm -hmm because I think there's 47 meaningful pieces of content potentially in this 40 minutes we spent together. I, I think that's right. I, I think that goes back to self-awareness and back to the theme that's I think evolving here, which is this is very contextual, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I think that's right for you. And by the way, I think the debate for you is if, you know, how much micro content does come out of this 40 minutes. It used to be a lot more. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I mean, because it, it was just for me. Here's the question, yeah. and if you hire somebody for $40,000 a year who's great at it, in post-production contextual to social, will it be much more? And will that lead to much more awareness to the top of the macro piece of content that you're passionate about? Yeah. And then it becomes, what are your ambitions? Do you exactly. wanna make that in investment? So, I really don't think there's a right or wrong. I think that what I'm passionate about is, oh my God, there's a permission for an enormous amount of content. And for you, this is 
been the way it played out, but for some people, a single piece of micro content on Instagram became the piece that brought them awareness to their long form YouTube video. My number one thesis is producing content at scale right now. It is such an opportunity. I, I couldn't, you know, I'm gonna beat this horse until not only is it dead, but it's buried and a, I throw a bomb on it, you know? <laughs> this is, this is the, for everybody in here who's nowhere close or not at where they want to be, it is absolutely the most cost effective way to start the process to whatever you want. It is about producing content. Producing content at scale for as many platforms as possible. So many people in this room could have all the things that they wanted to happen on YouTube and on Instagram for the last three and a half years and has not happened, actually happen if they get serious about TikTok for the next six months. What is amazing about the volume model is the notion of marketing for the sake of better marketing. So what happens after you post those 78 is you start getting quant and qual feedback. And what you do with that feedback is you make the next decision, which is are you gonna write more about that or has there been such a huge reaction to people's response on what 5G actually means to their day to day, not just faster and better battery, but how our entire world changes when you create that speed of information, how that actually makes autonomous cars real, how that actually allows a doctor in Peru to perform a surgery on somebody in New York, how that actually, actually, actually does. When you see the response, now all of a sudden you say, you know what, that little three sentences we said about did you know when 5G is in your life, this happens, got such a big response, why don't we now have our graphic designer make an infographic real quick around five things you don't know about 5G and let's post that at 3.37 p.m. today. And then when that goes well, then you decide, why don't we make a quick little video on our iPhone talking to Lars in R&D? He knows a lot about this shit. Let's go over to him, Lars says, and then you just post it, not with what's quality, with green screen and lighting. I mean, I was powdered before I came out here right now. <laughs> That to me is not the variable of success of this talk. <laughs> that was not gonna be the variable that made this go well or not. It was what I was gonna say. YouTube watcher, what's up, it's Gary Vee. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also wanna ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight, this is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you soon.